All right, just wanted to do a video explaining the fact that the gift of speaking in tongues was meant to be a sign for unbelieving Israel. Okay, I'm going to show some scriptures on that because this is a key factor of scriptural speaking in tongues that is often overlooked by the charismatic cult. It's the fact that tongues were a sign for unbelieving Israel, that God was doing a work and that God was going to be saving Gentiles, that simple non-Jews. So let's get right into the scriptures on this matter. So first of all, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 20 to 22. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, be in understand, but in understanding be men. For in the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe, that believe not, but for them which believe. Okay. Interesting note on verse 22 is that you don't need signs and wonders if you have faith. You see, faith is the evidence of things not seen. These signs and wonders were for those who didn't believe. Okay. Compare verse 22 with 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Okay. The Jews require a sign. It says it plain and simple. The signs are for those who don't believe. And also um, notice verse 21, for in the law it is written. Okay. It's referring back to a prophecy. Well, what is this? Well, uh, Paul is referring back to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 to 12, and explaining that tongues are fulfillment of this prophecy directed at the Israelites. Okay, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 to 12. Uh, going on to the prophecy here, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 to 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Okay, that's what Paul's referring to in verse 21 of 1 Corinthians 14. This people, when it says this people, it's referring to the Israelite nation. The gift of speaking in tongues or, uh, or languages was a sign directed at the unbelieving racial Israelites. And it was meant to show them that God was speaking to all nations and calling all men into one new spiritual body in Christ composed of both Israelites and Gentiles. And I want to point something else too. Uh, Jews, okay, when I refer to Jews, in this case, I'm referring to the racial Israelites, okay? The religion of Judaism is a false religion. The, the, I make a distinction between religious Jews and racial Jews. When I talk about Jews in a negative light, I'm referring to religious Jews, the Talmudic Jews, who often aren't even not even racial Israelites, okay? It's one thing to criticize religion. When I go after Jews, I go after them religiously, okay? I never attack racial them racially. And, and like I said, most religious Jews are not even racial Israelites. A lot of them are just white Europeans who follow the uh, false religion of Judaism for some weird reason, considering the fact that it's very much anti-white, uh, a lot of anti-white stuff in the town, would I put it that way, but uh, a bit of a side issue, just so people don't call me anti-Semitic. But it says here, uh, also, another point I want to bring up, each time biblical, spung, biblical speaking in tongues occurred, there were always unbelieving Israelites present. Here's proof on that, okay? Acts chapter 2, verse 4 to 11. Acts chapter 2, verse 4 to 11. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we are born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, in Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya and about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Okay, notice that there were Jews that were present here. Okay, more examples of this. Acts chapter 10, verse 44 to 46. These are the three main examples of tongues being spoken, and each time, I'm going, to, I'm going to be showing you three main examples in the book of Acts, and each time you'll see that there are unbelieving Jews that are present. Acts chapter 10, verse, uh, was it 46? Or sorry, 44 to 46, do apologize. Uh, it says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then answer Peter, and he goes on to talk about the whole thing of baptism there. But again, notice they were, they of the circumcision, okay, racial Jews who were circumcised. They were present. 
and the other example of tongues being spoken in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 19, verse 4 to 6. Acts chapter 19, verse 4 to 6. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Okay. And also I want to point something out as well. In verse 8, it talks about what he goes into the synagogue. And then in verses 1 and 2, in verse 2 in particular, Acts 19, verse 2, it, so it shows them questioning about the, about the existence of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because Judaism denies the existence of the Holy Ghost. The racial Jews did not believe in the Godhead. So verse 2 and verse 8 shows, again, the unbelieving Jews that were present when the tongues were being spoken. So anyway, that's those, and those, like I said, those are the three examples you'll find of tongues being spoken each time you have unbelieving Jews that are present. Why did Jews need to see signs and wonders like speaking in tongues to believe the gospel? Well, Paul answered this question in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. It says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And another verse you can compare this to is John chapter uh, 4. I believe it's John chapter 4. This isn't in my notes, but just want to point this out. John chapter 4 and verse 48, which talks about, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And he's talking to the Jews in that context there. Why? Because the Jews need a sign. The sign and wonder of speaking in tongues, which were known languages, listed in Acts chapter 2, verse 4 to 11, uh, not the demonic gibberish that charismatics do, was a sign and wonder that was done in order to fulfill, in fulfillment of basically Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 to 12, and to confirm the truth of the gospel to the Jews, and to confirm that God was doing the work with the Gentiles as well. The need for signs and wonders like speaking in tongues went away once the final revelation of scripture was given. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. In very infamous verse that a lot of charismatics have a have a very um very a lot of them can't handle this verse these these uh, the scripture right here, First uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen verse eight to ten, charity never faileth but whether there be prophecies they shall fail whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away, for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when that which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away, okay, some points I want to make there. When it says that which is perfect, it's referring to the written word of God. And that which is perfect uh, came after the final revelation of scripture was given and the canon was sealed. Okay, And here's my, here's my proof on that. And also you can compare this with Second, uh, Second Peter chapter 1 verse 16 down to verse 21, where it talks about the transfiguration of voices from, from heaven, and then it explains that we have a more sure word of prophecy, even more so than voices from heaven, the word of God. So uh, more, more for the proof on the matter, but here it is. Revelation chapter 22 verse 18 to 19. This is when the this is the this is the warning against these charismatics, by the way, who will add to the word of God via their false prophecies, by the way. This is a good warning to them. Also, Proverbs chapter 30, verse, I believe it's five to six talks about add thou not unto thy word. Another good verse on the matter. But Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Okay, why? Because once that, that final revelation was given, the canon is closed, we don't need anything else. All we need is the word of God. Again, you can see Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, second Timothy chapter three, verse 15 to 17, and second Peter chapter one, verse 16 to 21. Those script, and, and many others too, by the way, uh, Psalms 19, verse 7 to 9. There's also Psalm 119, verse, I believe it's 97 down to verse 100. I mean, so many scriptures demonstrate that everything we need is in the word of God. That's, that's, our, that's our more sure word of prophecy. Okay, the born again saint, the born again saint, sorry, walks by faith rather than sight. That's in Second Corinthians chapter five verse seven, Second Corinthians chapter four verse eighteen, and Hebrews chapter eleven verse one. Everything the saint needs is contained in the written word of God, not through signs and wonders. So that's the point I want to make: is that these signs were a sign for unbelieving Israel because the Jews require a sign. Uh, John chapter four verse forty-eight and First Corinthians one twenty-two. We don't need signs and wonders. We have everything we need in the word of God. So this is something that's charismatic, these charismatic to Pentecostals will ignore as they counterfeit and, and pervert the scriptural gifts. And basically through their satanic counterfeit, they mimic these gifts from the Holy Ghost. Because the, the, the Bible does show that Satan can mimic these gifts. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8-10 to 10 talks about that. So anyway, 
Uh, I, could go, I could go off on a rabbit trail on that, but I'm not going to. Uh, don't be deceived by this charismatic movement. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.